Throughout the videos, we've really been focused on the behavior of our circuits, and we've been a little light on what the different units and sort of coordinate systems that we're working with in this analysis. So in this video, we're going to be a little more explicit and a little more formal about what's going on when we write out expressions about some voltage source over time, and then through Euler's identity, it becomes written out as this more complex expression, and then somehow, eventually, how we turn this into the phasor component that we care about most particularly. So the main objective today is going to be talking about what sort of coordinate system this expression is, and this is considered a polar coordinate system, and how we can take that coordinate system and turn it into a more familiar x, y uh, Euclidean point or into a vector in sort of x, y space. So as a refresher, let's talk about the polar uh, coordinate system. And so a polar coordinate system is represented by two things. There is a length for some object and then there is an angle for some object in that coordinate system. So if I was to write something as e or a to the j phi, this a here is talking about the length of this polar, this point in polar space, and the angle here has to do with phi. And so the way this would look sort of graphically is that if I had a coordinate system, I would have some element in this coordinate system that is going to be sort of a distance away. So this point in this space here is a distance away, and at the moment it will be phi degrees up from the origin. So if we happen to call this object here x, we would say that x lives right at this point. And because of the imaginary component in our expressions for all of our phasors, this polar coordinate system exists on the horizontal axis on the real line and on the vertical axis in the uh, imaginary line. So this is actually the complex plane where the x-axis is real numbers and the imaginary axis um, is the y-axis. Now if we have something that is in the polar domain and again, let's imagine that it has some sort of length and some sort of angle. We can move from this polar representation into a more familiar x, y Euclidean representation by assuming that this is sort of a right angle here and mapping down into our x-axis and then mapping back over into our y-axis. So basic trigonometry tells us that the x-coordinate for this particular point is going to be cosine phi times r, and that the y-coordinate of this point is sine times phi, sine of phi times r. Now, to get a little particular, we can talk about the exact point right here as being the point x, y, but because our object has some length, because we're moving from a polar system, it is better to sort of represent this object as a vector, sort of x, y, denoting that it is not simply just a point, but it's actually a vector in this space that has length. So as we move from, say, our polar systems, something that looks like this, into our Euclidean systems, we will use the vector notation, sort of x, y, and especially our angle brackets, to denote that this object is, again, not simply a point, but is a vector. And because our particular phasors have an imaginary component, our x-axis is going to be the real number line, and our imaginary um, number line is going to be our y-axis. So we can actually break apart this vector into its two components by saying x is on the real axis, and that y is on the imaginary Access. And so these three representations are all sort of equivalent, but let's be really sort of uh, particular and say that this is the vector representation of some element. This will be the rectilinear representation of an element, and this is the polar representation.
And so we can move between all three of these formats uh, given our relationships up here, but it's important that you know, when we're doing sort of math by hand, it's easier to sort of multiply these components and then add these components. Vice versa, it's a little bit harder to multiply uh, vectors and then to do addition with polar components. So when we're doing these phasor problems by hand, the choice of the coordinate system may matter simply to make the math easier for you. But if you're inside of MATLAB, if you're inside of a calculator, it doesn't actually matter, and underneath it all, it'll do all the math as you desire. To finish things out, let's go from a Euclidean, polar, uh, Euclidean coordinate system to a polar coordinate system. So again, we've got a two-dimensional coordinate space, and let's say that we have a vector, and we'll call the vector, we'll call this vector is A, and it exists at points X and Y in this particular space. Now, if we want to turn this into a polar coordinate system, we need to find out the length of this vector and then the angle of this vector um, relative to the origin axis. And so we can use our normal trigonometry and say, well, R is going to be equal to the uh, magnitude of that vector, which would be equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared. And then this particular angle right here would be the tangent inverse of y over x. So this transform moves us from a Euclidean or sort of rectilinear system back into a polar. So if we want, we can bring this all back together on one giant sort of final slide. So imagine that we have some sort of vector a in the two-dimensional space. It has two components to it, x, and a second component to it, y. And so I could represent those as a vector, as sort of a two-element vector. And because our components are in the real number line, and then again up here in the imaginary line, so again, this is the complex plane, we can represent this as a rectilinear coordinate that adds the both of them together along with the imaginary uh, number. So the two major systems that we've been focusing on are polar, and polar is defined as a radius or a length and an angle, and we can see our relationships down here with uh, the Euclidean values of x and y, or we could just as equally talk about a Euclidean coordinate system that is based on x and y, and we can see our transforms over here to move from a polar system into a Euclidean system. So again, um, this is a lot of work to do by hand. If you're inside of a calculator or inside of MATLAB, we will kind of have ways to do all of this for us. But it's good to know just sort of on your own how to move between the coordinate systems so you know how to make sure you're adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing, and just generally combining your values to get the correct answers.